I need to be practical and train myself for a new career in comedy. You're going to be a comedian? Comedy seemed like something that wouldn't require great intelligence. Hey! Steven, do you know that um, the Spartans are... That they are like... Uh, practice man love with children oh geez okay so this is what's gonna happen i t what did i tell you he was gonna do anything he could to avoid oh oh there he is oh no sam cedar what a whoa no. what a fucking nightmare you, hi everyone i just wanted to jump in when i'm editing this video and make a couple comments so this video is not to be taken at 100 percent face value i like to stephen crowder i'm discussing my opinions of political stances with facts from articles and different things that i've found in the same way that he uses his perception of facts and the articles and things that he finds. And obviously, I added some rhetorical aspects. This is just a lighthearted video, me cracking some jokes about a guy who lived in Canada for a while and is just trying to pretend that he's been American his whole life. So, enjoy. Hi everyone, it's me again. Squish Gang is present and ever-growing. And today, I welcome you to Canadian Menaces Episode 2 with today's candidate, Steven Crowder. Woo! Okay. So I just want to say hi again as well. Um, hope you guys like the new setup. Shout out to Aerith Girl. I'll tag her TikTok down below uh, for sending me this on the Amazon wish list. And that's linked down below for anyone else who's interested. You don't have to support that way if you don't want to. Even just watching, commenting. I'm grateful for all of it. Even if you just clicked this video for a second and went, ew, lib, and left. <laughs> Because we got this fun little glow in the dark squishy that you can't even buy in Canada, and this cute little accidentally bootleg bat, and I'm obsessed. Thank you all for supporting, uh, watching the live that was on uh, Friday, February 18th. That was pretty recent, and um, some other videos I have going on. I am trying to pump out two videos a week on this channel, whether that be one live and one video, or two pre recorded videos, or any form of uh, content like that. Hopefully, that's good for everybody. Oh, I do want to say we do have some trigger warnings for this one. We have homophobia, transphobia, racism, uh, conspiracy, sexism, every, any like misogynist, patriarchal, a phobia, etc. that could possibly come out, we're gonna have today because we're talking about Steven Crowder, like I said. Episode one of Canadian Menaces will be linked down below. That is on Foodie Beauty. If you guys are interested in that one and more of these i will begin once i get like a few of them i'll make them into their own dedicated playlist for now they're just going into the uh, rhetoric analysis playlist if i remember correctly if not I'll, whatever one the other one was in so so people also brought to my attention that there's like way more canadian medicines that i thought also feel free to put some more down below that i might have missed i had foodie beauty in the last one like i said but then people were suggesting things like um nicole arbor the vegan teacher and tom mcdonald and stuff like that so that's really cool. I wanted to make one on J Station, but then Nerd City made their like huge expose video and I didn't want to like sound like I was recycling their video. So I'll give that a bit more time, maybe see what happens with J Station a little bit more. I would like to use that Nerd City video for reference too because they have like interviews and things that other people don't have access to. The video once again will be in a kind of essay style format. Um, I could not find, sometimes I like to find videos that other people make as far as like who is this person or what does this person do, etc. And I couldn't find anything else on Steven Crowder in that type of style. I didn't, I didn't go that deep to be fair though. So I guess we're probably going to find out today why that is. However, if I'm getting racist, homophobic, sexist comments, if people start throwing slurs in the, in the comments or doing a bunch of disgusting rhetoric, I will delete them and block you. I'm being ruthless because I know y'all about to be annoying in my comments. Y'all being like some weird right wing people that are going to be weird <laughs> parts of the video part one who is steven crowder and since when is he canadian part two a uh, youtube career and just rhetoric of his delivery and part three white right my opinion on right-wing commentators in general and my final thoughts on the whole ordeal so let's get right into it part one who is steven crowder born july 7th 1987 in detroit michigan steven crowder moved to canada at three years old with his french canadian mother where he lived until he was 18 years old Stephen Crowder to this day possesses a dual citizenship of the United States and Canada. Currently, he is known for his Louder with Crowder kind of podcast show that he has on his YouTube channel. With the infamous Change My Mind segment, that was a huge meme in the in around like 2018. Also, apparently at age 13, he voiced the brain on Arthur, which is why I had that opening for this one. Because 
that was what he did, which makes me sad because to me, Arthur was a beloved show, but now I'm going to think about little baby Steven Crowder every time I watch it. Steven Crowder is not one to flee from controversy. He's had a lot of um, issues in the past regarding kind of aggression or interesting displays of his opinions and starting one of them being in 2012, Steven Crowder had altercation to the right to work law. And allegedly he had posted an edited video of him getting into a physical altercation with somebody, but then edited it out when he like shoved them on the ground. Nobody pressed charges, they decided not to in 2012. But that was one of the first scandals you can find on like the Wikipedia and things like that. 2013, Steven Crowder was actually, so Steven Crowder in 2009 began to work for Fox and worked with Fox till October 2013. This is because he was talking shit about Sean Hannity uh, publicly and Fox decided to end their relationship. In 2009 also, Steven Crowder had launched his YouTube channel. So this is what he kind of moved to post Fox. But in 2017, he also started streaming the Louder with Crowder podcast series on what's called CRTV. This is just a conservative media outlet. In 2018, people began to report on Steven Crowder's outwardly racist, homophobic, sexist, etc. content with Crowder allegedly calling Betty Yu's face aggressively Asian. So this is kind of one of the starts of his more, how do I say this, um, controversial takes and controversial opinions and uh, viewpoints. I tried to go in with this one unbiased in the sense of like understanding difference in opinions and viewpoints and all these types of things, even though a lot of Steven Crowder's viewpoints align with people not deserving fundamental human rights. I, I did my makeup watching an episode of Louder with Crowder, the most recent one about the blockades. My brain rotted. It was awful. And I'll explain rhetorically why I have such a problem. Because when you study argumentation and structures and ways that people can convince other people of certain viewpoints and what kind of feels like the conspiracy rabbit hole, he was, Stephen Crowder's whole crew is just, God, just bastardization of structures of language and things like that. And it was just a lot to sit through. Famously, one of uh, Stephen Crowder's kind of biggest racist, homophobic kind of public actions was with a YouTuber or a content creator called Carlos Ma uh, Maza. If I'm saying that wrong, let me know. Stephen Crowder was homophobic and racist towards him. There's actually videos about it on YouTube. This brought forward to the kind of more mainstream, at least like internet groupings and people and stuff like that, the ha what Stephen Crowder's character was like and who he really was as a person. So that's just kind of how we've even gotten into like the current way that people would know who Steven Crowder is, like modern day Louder with Crowder, etc. So part two is the rhetoric of his delivery and his like actual YouTube career. I actually found out who Steven Crowder was when he went on, he was trying to debate Ethan Klein and then he got dunked on by Sam Cedar instead. Which is interesting because I talk about this with debate bros all the time. And this is kind of the idea of like what creates a good debate and what the purpose of a debate is, right? And something with debate bros is they always need to do it in a way that favors them entirely. And then they will not do it otherwise. So if you watch, there's the H3 highlight, podcast highlight, which I'll link down below as well. They talk about emails with... with um, Stephen Crowder's dad, who's his bookie, talking about there can't be any funny business. You can't bring anybody else in. You can't do X, Y, Z because then it will be unfavorable for Stephen Crowder, which for somebody says, well, oh, well, then you you're saying you wanted it to be unfair towards Stephen Crowder. Stephen Crowder is doing it, his show with four other guys there. And Stephen Crowder has a bigger platform than Ethan Klein does. And Steven Crowder has all of the debates set up and it was supposed to be more or less under his terms. So he's asking for it to be entire, essentially entirely advantageous towards him, which is disingenuous in the debate because the whole point of the dialectic is supposed to be an even neutral grounds with minimal ethos involved, if possible, if not in a neutral party in hopes to kind of create a more impactful discourse. Louder with Crowder is currently the biggest platform that Steven Crowder seems to have as far as like reach goes. And typical topics that relate to right-wing media, how news is reported, mainstream media, 
um, American law, racial relations, healthcare, etc., thrown in with a bunch of misuse of certain terms, manipulation of de- dictionary definitions, and overall hateful commentary that's kind of laced through all of those videos. It was a lot to watch. <laughs> Because, so I was watching the Canadian Trucker one, right? So the beginning of the episode starts with Steven Crowder ranting about YouTube laws, or YouTube's policy versus legality of, like, free speech and how people can use things. So he says, okay, well, it's the law to be able to talk freely in public forums. But these private companies are not letting us do that under their own policies. But then he's talking about the trucker vaccine mandate and he's essentially saying private business or people who are hiring them should be able to do whatever they want and not force vaccines on anybody. So there should be a way to get out of it for the sake of private business, except for when private business is trying to get out of you funneling conspiracy theories. There needs to be no more safe harbor, 230 is something that needs to be reexamined. There's the law that exists, and then you have YouTube and Facebook and Twitter with their own policies. And sometimes it actually conflicts with the law. For example, single party consent is what allows for investigative journalism. Yeah. That means that both parties do not need to know if a camera is running. That's how you do undercover journalism. And then YouTube says, no, 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 no. We're, gonna, we're going to get rid of videos that James O'Keefe used, even though it's in accordance with the law, we don't want to have it on our platform. Well, hold on a sec. Do you think the world is a better place right now? No. When Sorry. rules are being applied selectively that favor, of course, communist corporate overlords. And of course, we know this with the NBA. We know the dollars coming in from China. We know YouTube. We know, we know that they want to get into these markets and they have to play ball with them. Americans, certainly not just this show, but liberal shows, any show should be able to cover what is happening internationally, especially when it's actually in accordance with the law. These companies are acting outside of the law and it makes you less free. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's how that works. Because also they talk about this, so they talk about the trucker protests, right? And they said that the incitement of violence has to be the only reason the War Measures Act can come in. And they said the truckers have, incited, have not incited any form of violence, have not done any, they've been entirely peaceful. Now, why did they have to shut the Rito Center down? With truckers flooding in, overwhelming the mall, and harassing the employees. Like, yelling in their faces. And shaking at the doors, and doing a bunch, and, and overall just being disruptive and aggressive. Arguably, borderline violence towards employees of the Rio Center. To government workers. Screaming in people's faces in the street. And for you, Mika, where do I find that? But then the Rio Center's website says it's closed. And they have, like, a statement on it. And also, I'm from that area. Or... I'm not from there. I went to college in that area. And I know people that work there now. (laughs) And, like, ask them pretty regularly, like, what's going on? Like, the truckers were not respectful and just staying on the hill and just doing whatever. Like, the rhetoric that they're trying to push here. It has disrupted working for other people that are not related to this cause at all. It has gone farther than just disrupting the government, which was not even in session for a majority of this protest. But it's, it's a lot of... Picking and choosing facts, which in itself is not factual. So we talk about goals of rhetoric, okay, it's the rhetorician named Campbell. He says there's four goals overall in modern rhetoric, which is one, to enlighten the understanding, which says to provide information upon which the audience can make a decision or take action. So this is what I'm saying the issue is when you're deliberately picking at what facts you want to utilize. Now, someone can argue to me, okay, well... You're picking and choosing the actions of the Rito Center to say that the truckers are inherently violent. I guess arguably you could say that, but at the same time, the War Measures Act is upon the incitement of a form of violence and a a disruption for the way of life for other people. Even a, a, a small number, if it's enough to overwhelm one of the biggest malls, is a is a high enough number that it is a decent proportion. Same thing with the with the Nazi flags and the Confederate flags and the don't tread on me stuff and the the you know fuck Trudeau flags and all those kinds of things. There's enough of a presence of aggression or violence or in or desired violence because a lot of the the wants that they have are the triggers to become a council. I don't even know what they what they want anymore. It's so unclear because you have some that are saying that are manipulating the fact of that there is it has been only peaceful and it's just kids playing when the cops have finally come because they've blocked off roads of the capital city and have shut down businesses or building shacks in the street and also harassing homeless shelters as well. Also happened, Shepherds of Good Hope, they have a statement on it. 
Next is to please the imagination. Use stylistic techniques to keep the audience interested in the rhetoric. So, so what Stephen Crowder does with this is, I've talked about this time and time and time again, because it's probably one of the most relevant um, rhetorical tactics used in modern day and one of the most relevant for kind of internet personalities and things like that, which is called the God terms. This is often defined by Richard Weaver. So God terms in this case tend to be big words that people desire or things that people look forward to. And then devil terms are going to be your opposite of that, obviously. So things that people are afraid of. So what Crowder likes to use God terms is like freedom, amendment, rights, things like that. And then his devil terms are communist Chinese government when talking about Russia, which makes no sense. <laughs> the communist Chinese government of Russia? What? And he talks about tyranny. This is a weird time in our country because you have tyrannical governments, and I do mean tyrannical governments, uh, working alongside each other and also working alongside media. We'll get to what's happening with the, uh, the IOC and NBC and not being able to broadcast any of their clips on YouTube and shutting down smaller channels, and that's also a concern. But you have this happening across the globe. And then you have protesters, young people. This is the first generation of people that I, who are demanding less freedom. Yeah. It's very weird. You, know, you think of the civil rights act. You think of black Americans. They're sitting there like, we, what do you, like, what do we want? The right to vote. And white people are like, that sounds reasonable. <laughs> 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 or you look at, like, even you look at the, like, the Tea Party. It was a Tea Party, even the most recent Tea Party. You're like, well, we feel like we're being overtaxed, and this is a record, record, you know, record amount of spending. It's like, oh, okay, we disagree with you, but we understand. Now it's like, what do you want? We want to take away their rights. Okay. Wait, what? What? Yeah. Dictatorship and violence in ways that they don't necessarily apply at all. Imposing military force when they feel that the population is threatened was all good for the Antifa terrorists and BLM terrorists, which were peaceful in the same way that the truckers are positioning, positioning themselves as peaceful, if you're trying to do that. Even then, arguably, like I said, the difference in viewpoint, structure, and organization is completely different and shouldn't even be comparable. So you want your cake and you eat it too, is all you're saying. Is I want, what I want is inherently right, even though my wants are driven by opinions that are formed out of fallacious rhetorical tactic, right? And... So pleasing the imagination is what he pumps in these terms with, right? So what he did is he read the term, up the term compelled on the, in the dictionary, okay? Which he read the definition. I want to see which one he did because I have a feeling it's not the one that comes up. But let's entertain him and read the word compelled in the dictionary. Then I will show you a clip. Uh, this means, of course, I get to force companies to comply. There will be an ability to compel Prick. for just compensation. <laughs> tow truck owners and operators to actually do the jobs for which they have contracts with various orders of government to well, keep highways the bargaining. and wow. roads clear. This is an example of a specific tool that is now available to local police of jurisdiction in places all across the country if needed. It would be to them to determine whether or not that is needed. Hey guys, I'm Control too. Can you give me that quote that I had from the Fortune article? I want to bring that up. So this is, uh, before we get to that, let me give you the definition. The definition from the dictionary of compel. Because it sounds like, oh, you just compel. Mm -hmm. Okay. It means to force or drive, especially to a course of action. What he's saying is this will allow the government to force people to what? Do what we demand. Mm -hmm. How's that freedom? How's that freedom? Because they're not just talking about forcing you, for example, to not break the law. By the way, that's not compelling you to do anything. That's setting a standard where you cannot harm somebody else. Compelling you, forcing you, meaning forcing you to do something proactive, like, I don't know, take a vaccine. That's different than saying, don't shoot that guy. Don't hit that person. Yeah. We're going to put this in you. This experimental mRNA. Uh, I, I hate using the term vaccine. Injection. Injection works. I think that's safe. Uh, we're going to Force or oblige someone to do something. Or bring something about by use of force or pressure. He's pushing, you're, you're forcing something or you want to oblige through force. But that's also the structure of legality. You are, are you, in that same episode, essentially we're trying to compel YouTube to stop taking your homophobic, racist, sexist notions down on your own grounds. And so when he said, he read the, the dictionary word for compel and then saw the word force and then said it is now tyranny. That the government, the Canadian government is now tyrannical, right? Now, let's look the let's look for the word tyranny. Cruel and oppressive government or rule. Nation under cruel and oppressive government, cruel, unreasonable, or arbitrary use of power or control. Cruel and unnecessary use of power or control. 
and arbitrary, without which it would mean without an actual driven reason. So you're saying trying to force the way of life back to normal from an arguably not entirely peaceful protest, no matter how they want to push that, is the same thing as arbitrary force power of control from a government to everybody. They're just trying to get the truckers out, but for some reason that's tyrannical to everybody. Because the other thing is too, the, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms says that there's these laws and stuff have to be structured under reasonable requirements, right? So like if one person's vaccinated and one person's not, and someone is chronically ill, if everybody's not vaccinated, nobody will get vaccinated, then you're forcing danger upon the person who has a pre-existing condition that they cannot control. That was the idea around that whole thing. But vaccine rhetoric neither here nor there. I'm just seeing his use of language in how he structures his arguments is that's how he's pushing this entertainment, right? Then move the passions, appeal to the audience's emotions. This comes from saying that uh, the government of Canada is essentially going to be North Korea. That's, again, forced hyperbole kind of drives an emotional response, especially when he's using terms like communist Chinese government to other governments that do not follow that same structure at all whatsoever. It's also really interesting because he won't call Joe Biden the president, which is kind of fucking awesome. That's awesome. (laughs) We love pretending that Trump won the election to grift off your cronies. Yo! (laughs) Then you have influence the will which is make the audience take action on the topic. He actually says at one point to like and comment to push in the YouTube algorithm because they don't like him in a point before the episode would be banned, which is interesting. And then also says things like influencing the will by saying that we cannot let America become disgusting and awful like Canada is with their tyrannical government, which is just wild. So we're also going to talk about the idea of the goals that he wants to achieve, right? So this is the um, rhetorical theory introduction textbook, which I read from pretty frequently. So it says, you probably also realize from these examples that often when you attempt to achieve one goal, you use rhetoric aimed at one of the other goals to achieve your primary goal. For instance, when attempting to persuade your friends to go to a particular movie, whereby your goal is to influence the will, you may also have to influence their passions or their understanding of the movie you wish to see. Campbell also observed this necessity for a multi-pronged approach to be true. While a rhetor may have may as a goal to enhance the audience's understanding of an idea, for example, the rhetoric may employ imaginative, passionate, or action-oriented rhetoric to achieve the goal or understanding. So in this case, right, we have this person who's trying to get you to believe that the government is inherently against you as someone who is right-winged and objectively very privileged by honing in on inconveniences or different ways that white people or whoever is in hand here, which is usually cis white men, to be honest, are being treated equally to everybody else. But because for them, that's put them down a peg, then it's tyranny, right? There are these types of references that he's making to conservatism that changing the structures in favor of people that are oppressed because it doesn't mean good things for the oppressor that it is not something that should be done, right? Because there's obviously limited resources that exist. The, the, the earth isn't just an infinite, you know, upbringing. So, you, so let's say you can't have billions of dollars as an individual if everyone can be able to afford to live. Because that balance can't be there because you can't hoard all of it up here and, and just have magical money show up at the bottom, right? So he's trying to influence you through these goals by using God terms, devil terms, by using emotion. He screams all the time. They have comedy, which is always at the expense of somebody. They had they talked about a man getting his um, prosthetic leg taken off when they're getting when he's getting arrested, and Stephen Crowder's trying to position this as an idea that he's like with the black man, but then starts to go off about like opiates and a, has a black scent and starts making all of these like racial uh, stereotypes and implications that were just like super off putting. Pills are like, huh? What's this here? Sounds like a damn maraca. Yeah, that's my pain pills because I'm in really bad pain. Yeah. You see, I'm missing a leg. I don't know if you know, but like, not only am I missing a leg, I had a fake leg. It was there five seconds ago, and now it's not. <laughs> yeah, and that's because of you. And it's t- it's glued to my skin, and now you're throwing it in the back. As a matter of fact, can I have those pain pills back? Oh, let's tell it to a judge. 
Hi. <laughs> yeah, also, I'm a black guy trying to use a bathroom at a gas station in suburban New York. And guess what answer they gave me? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even give me the key with that giant wooden paddle and shit. They just told me to use the bush. Very much no. And it's hard for me to use the bush because the ground is uneven. And there's a little known key factor that you seem to forget that I got a fake leg. Then we, next, we get into what's called presumption and burden of proof. Okay, so this is by the rhetorician named Watley. Watley was the first to transfer from the law of evidence into the general field of non-legal argumentation. The ideas of presumption and burden of proof. Presumption, according to Watley, is a preoccupation of the ground by a side by a side in a controversy. Burden of proof lies on the side of him who would dispute it. For simple example. You might think of the childhood game King of the Mountain, in which a person stands at the top of a hill until someone else overtakes that position. In the United States legal system, for example, people are presumed innocent until proven guilty. That means that a person preoccupies the ground of innocence until enough evidence can be presented or prove that he or she is guilty. Or you might consider an example in which you want to argue that a certain campus policy should be changed. The current policy and those who support it would have presumption because the policy currently exists. Since you want to change the policy, you would have the burden to prove it that you that you should change it. Essentially, these two concepts imply that there is always some kind of advantage to keeping things the same, and that before you could, a change can take place, a new idea has to be presented. So Stephen Crowder is a conservative and votes for conservatism, and he wants nothing to change. He wants to be in a position of privilege and authority over other people for as long as humanly possible. And how Stephen Crowder plays King of the Hill is he just yells. I'll, um, I'll, obviously, I'll put in the, the clip of the when Steve, uh, Sam Cedar came into the um, argument, Stephen Crowder starts yelling over him. He goes, <laughs> and like he just literally starts yelling. He starts screaming. And why is that <laughs> Steven, I don't know why. No it one's be, worried oh, about it. Sam didn't want to do it. Let's have Sam, a debate. Come on, just, I'll tell you what. I have, a general, I have a general This is a great opportunity. I don't start a debate to, based with people on a lie. And how about you get sabotaging? How about you get Steven, show yourself, you coward. Steven, show yourself. Don't show your co-host. Ethan, you should show yourself. Ethan, how can you respect yourself as a man, brother? Steven, Steven, you are such a coward. Stop showing your little leprechaun co-host who comes out dressed like your sidekick. Ethan, Ethan, why do you have to bring show Steven? Why do you have to thing I've ever heard. So you have a show with less viewers to come on to debate him because you can't? <laughs> well, obviously, if I'm, a, apparently if, obviously I'm, a, if I'm a layup and not a debater. About it. Well, look, yeah, you're the I one mean, you're the one, you're the one, got Steve Steve the one that got angry about Show it. This is how Stephen Crowder kind of forms his argument. Like, he doesn't actually argue words. Like, if you listen to a Stephen Crowder podcast, it's just a bunch of word vomit. It's like joke, stereotypical joke of uh, at someone's expense that's not a cis white man. Then point he wants to make against governmental change then word vomit of devil term of the newfound system that opposes the old system in place the old system that can be for example rights for people to be um like the right to work laws that he fought for before the black lives matter to have racial equality which requires equity to push up from the bottom because of the way that people have been oppressed historically. And <laughs> Stephen Crowder plays King of the Mountain for conservati conservatism and also for kind of hateful derogatory speech and for being able to push his notions that are not well-founded. You cannot form a rebuttal position when you try to argue something and someone just yells over you. So that's kind of the way that it seems to work based on what I've seen from his own videos even when he's talking to other people in the podcast room he just yells Oop. he just yells over them he's always screaming <laughs> so refutation is another one that steven refutation is another um tactic that steven crowder uses so refutation is the practice of countering the claims of an arguer with evidence reasoning or other techniques while these ideas influence how refutation is taught and practiced today let's look briefly at some ideas about the subject Wally remarked that if an opponent uh, if an opponent predisposed to objecting to what will be said, it is advisable to begin with a refutation. Yet, if none ha if no one has objected to what he will be said, beginning with a refutation may imply a conscious that may be against it. Some sometimes indeed it will be difficult to give a satisf satisfactory refutation as the opposed opinion till we have gone through the argumentation in support of our own. Even in that case, however, it will be better to take some brief notice of them early in the composition, with a promise of afterwards considering them more fully and then refu refuting them. This technique, noted Wally, was Aristotle's usual procedure. There are two general methods of refutation. The first is, less strictly and properly called refutation, involves proving the opposite of one's opponent has stated. 
so this is what i was doing i was i came in with reputation when talking about the peaceful trucker protest and the fact that it needed to be changed because it wasn't peaceful when businesses had to shut down because they were being harassed that's not peaceful anymore okay when it and it's been weeks and they're blocking off people's ability to work outside of anybody who even gave a shit about them right people can't go work anywhere in the byword market people can't go work anywhere in that area so it's not it's beyond they've messing with the way of life that people who have nothing to do with it okay so i refuted by saying well no you're leaving out xyz right the next method is might object to the opponent's reasoning by identifying fallacies in his or her reasoning by noting an arguer has incorrectly used a syllogism for instance so my refutation was talking about kind of the pleas of emotion and the use of God and devil terms in inflammatory language in his argumentation. Stephen Crowder will refute by calling you woke or a lib. He'll call, he'll make fun of you, he'll call you names, he'll refute based on a difference in supposed status, which is a fallacious argument in itself. This comes with his idea of wokeness and how he'll turn the tables on the idea that someone who wants change in benefits of people beyond themselves have to have some sort of ulterior motive, which is not necessarily true. Some people just want other people to have decent lives. He also relies on what's called authoritative, authoritative argumentation, which is interesting because he's so anti-authoritarian, apparently, right? Which means that Data rules and testimony of some person, just on some arbitrary person that he wants to hook onto that day, which is often honestly himself or people in any sort of non-mainstream media, non-mainstream media adaptation of something, because it's inherently a bad idea to have any sort of trust in anything related to the government or anyone who s supports a government action at that time. Part three, just right-wing commentary, my final thoughts. I said, essentially, the systems used in these forms of commentary is something that does not... So, like, the systems that are used in these in these forms of commentary, I notice a lot, is if something doesn't provide a 100% immediate solution, then it does not matter and shouldn't exist or should not be implemented. So, this is something like the vaccines, right? The vaccines did not come in and 100% make COVID stop and did not 100% cure everybody instantly. Therefore, what is the point of doing it at all? There's no point in reduction if it doesn't take up the whole, right? Or things like Black Lives Matter. They did the protests and didn't overthrow the white government. So what was the point? They were just terrible. These are talking points you'll see on, on people's Twitters, on these podcasts and all these different types of things, where it's this idea that if, and if the lesser can't, the lesser is not the whole, then there's no point of any of it. Have your own opinions, but also give light that I dis that I might disagree with you, uh, with, the, with our right-wing way of thought and with these types of podcasts and these types of forms of opinions. Obviously, I'm not a fan, especially because I find it so hypocritical. Like, what... It's it's funny that it's called Louder with Crowder because his form of debate is just yelling over you. There's just so many problems. I tried to watch... I tried to give any tip of the hat to any... But it just felt like word vomit. I tried, I tried, and I know I'm going to get so many nasty comments, and honestly, like, for my own mental health, I might just block them, because before you go, well, you're shutting down the discourse, you've come onto my platform. You've come into my house. So, if I don't want to deal with you, I don't really have to. It's not your right to come in and be misogynistic or call anybody names. It's not a right that you can just come into my private entity and do that right because don't you, me as a private person with my private entity should i not have these choices or is that not good when it doesn't favor you right yeah i invite steven to argue with someone on the same level of him and like he can't raise his voice that would be cool i'd love to see that um because that almost never happens to what i've seen anyways in conclusion yikes uh, like I said, I'll be deleting outwardly hateful comments. This one's going to be rough and I'm scared a little bit, but you know, whatever happens, happens, I suppose. And just like how opinions and views are valid, it's valid that I don't want to look at them sometimes. <laughs> and yeah, this was a big one. Suggest the next episode of Canadian Menaces. Might do a lighter one thinking like Tom McDonald. That'd be kind of fun. 
or visit uh, Nicole Arbor again, because who what's she been doing? <laughs> Besides being fat phobic. <laughs> you guys have a great day, and I'll see you around. Bye. Go fuck yourself. You think we like this? You think we fucking like you? No, we fucking hate you. We fucking hate you. Shut your fucking mouth. Fuck you. Fuck you. Taking over the fucking country. I don't want any part of what you guys have. You guys are fucking idiots. You're fucking terrorists. You can go fuck yourself. And here's my fucking statement. Put it on your fucking Twitter account. Share it with your Facebook friends. And go fuck yourself. I don't give a fuck about you. Go the fuck home. Nobody fucking cares about your bullshit. You walk around your fucking tailgate party and your goddamn nonsense. Nobody fucking cares. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I'm you gotta get my fucking. 100 years after the Freedom Convoy, all we remembered was his statement. Take your fucking trucks and shove them up your fucking asses, you terrorist scumbag fucks. <laughs>